Gary's been un under a lot of criticism there. I mean, as a head coach, how hard is that? A lot harder for me than him. <laughs> he's got a ring. Uh, you know, Gary uh, Williams, is, like I said, he's one of the most well-respected coaches in the league when it comes to the success he had at Boston College, at Ohio State, now at his alma mater, Maryland. You bring your alma mater national championship and they give you heat. You know, just ba back off, let the man <laughs> exactly. do his job. You know, everything's going to work out fine. And I think they'll find a way to win this game. And look, they beat Carolina this year, so I don't mm -hmm. think they'll be intimidated, uh, intimidated at all by Memphis. If they get past Cal in this first round, do you think they have a chance to make a run? Very much so. I, I think uh, teams like this are the most dangerous. You get those major right. conference teams that get seated a little low, and, and, right. and they're dangerous basketball teams. Well, let's go right back out to the game right now and take a live look in. He seems so proud of his team and the job he's done with them. Yeah, very genuine. And, uh, you know, he has something that's a special situation. He's coaching his son, you know, which yeah. none of us, we just discussed that earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and for a father to be able to do that, that's, that's magic right there. I think Cornell's going to have their hands full, but it's going to be a tempo game for Cornell. Cornell's just got to make this game yeah. played at a snail's pace and, and, and get some real good shots and just try to hang around. But they're a talented team. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll hear from the top seeded Louisville Cardinals and Rick Patino. Tom, you said it was very obvious watching him in the Big East tournament. Yeah, I think one of the things you can see when, when you see the best in our business, the great coaches, is, is and in his case, it's amazing because his style of play hasn't changed drastically everywhere he's been, and he's won at a very high level there, but he orchestrates the game. You know, there's a timeout, he comes out, and all of a sudden things change drastically for the better, or at the half, he made some great adjustments, and then they went on a run against Villanova in the semis and then against uh, Syracuse in the finals. But, you know, he's as good as there is in our business. We look at his numbers, 20 points on the day so far, two rebounds, an assist. I mean, I know, Tom, you would love to have a guy like that on your team. I'll take two. <laughs> I'll take half of them, to be quite honest, the way he plays. But I think one of the great things is they're probably looking at this as if they may not get Lawson back. Mm -hmm. And it's a great challenge for all of these, as yeah. you say, Ronnie, yeah. all McDonald's, all Americans. There's a reason why they're so good. They're so competitive. They're all going to step up. They're all going to do a little bit more of what they need to do. And, and the team may change a little bit, but they're going to continue to be successful. Yeah. One of the first games in Greensboro. I think with one of the things now with Dyson down, you'll see those two playing together more. Yeah. And they'll play a little bit smaller, and, and Price has done such a good job scoring the basketball lately, they'll move him off the ball and play him with Kemba. Yeah. And, uh, and they'll be small in the backcourt, but they can make up for it up front with the beat, obviously, yeah. and Adrian. And it'll give them a little more, a little more offensive power, and, and that's what they're lacking with Dyson down. Well, let's keep going. Out in Kansas City, it's one. Guys, I was really impressed with the job Florida State did in the ACC tournament, especially Tony Douglas, not just a guy who can score, but who can be a lockdown defender. Last time we checked the box score, didn't have many points here tonight, but Florida State's starting to pull away. Yeah, well, Tony can do so much, and that run Florida State just put together, uh, it's tough for Wisconsin to chase you. You know, they want that score down in the 20s, which is where it was early on. And, and then Florida State goes on that little bit of a run and gets separation. And it's tough for Wisconsin to play at a quicker pace. So I think Florida State's in good shape here. They're one more run away, extend that lead, and they might have this game put away for the evening. A 12-point lead for Florida State at the break, 31 to 19. Here's the good news if you're a Maryland fan. They're not going to see anything tomorrow that they didn't see during the regular season. As tough a schedule as anybody played, especially with ACC action. I agree. I, I think, you know, they, look, they beat North Carolina at home, so they've seen that high-octane athlete. If they win tomorrow, they can win the national championship. You know, they have everything in place if they can get through that kind of uh, challenge tomorrow and beat Memphis. All right, it certainly will be a challenge. Let's quickly go back to the phones. Dan Tournament, Cleveland State went to Syracuse. And while most folks know that they won on a buzzer beater, they led by six with a minute to go. They led most of that entire second half against Jim Beheim's boys. Hey, Gary Waters, just an outstanding coach, did a great job at Canton. You know, this is an escape from New York game. Gary was at <laughs> Rutgers. He's back there now. Cedric Jackson was at St. John's. He's back there. They find the NCAA tournament out there. So he's an outstanding coach. He's got a great game plan, and they're passionate about it, and this could be the upset of the day. Well, speaking of Jim Beheim, we'll hear from the Raspy Voice Hall of Famer. When we return, we'll take you back down to Miami.